So welcome to this short video on disc herniations get better. All right, so really, really positive news to give you straight off the bat. And my name, by the way, is Ben Cormack. So the subject of the video is disc herniations get better. And I think that is fantastic news if you've ever been told you have had a disc herniation and that's causing those symptoms in the leg and pain in the back and, you know, those electric shocks that go down and all those horrible, nasty things associated with ridiculous or nerve root problems. So one thing I want to say straight off the bat is these problems are often over identified. So we know that disc and nerve issues collectively account for about 10% of back pain. Actual proper herniated discs probably account for about 4 or 5% of back pain. And this would include, you know, symptoms kind of specifically below the knee, symptoms where actually the leg pain may be worse than the back pain, and very nerve-like symptoms. So electric shocks, you know, pain that travels down the leg. Not just a little bit of pain in the buttock or the groin or the upper leg. Specifically, it generally would have to go below the knee. But back to the subject of herniated discs. Now, how do we know that they get better? Well, this is why we have research. So a great study by Chu, Systematic Review, back in 2014, looked at this specific subject. So the regression, the spontaneous regression of disc herniations. And they looked at a number of studies, nine or 10 studies, um, that ranged from looking at a time frame of three months to one year. So this is the time frame that we are looking at for change within discs. And what they found was that different types of herniations likely got better at different kind of percentages um, of, of that regression. So we start with the big winner, which is the sequestrated disc, where actually material comes out from the disc, separates itself um, from the disc, goes into the nerve root, generally kind of inflammatory chemicals that irritate that nerve root and cause some of these symptoms. And about 90% of those type of herniations will significantly change within that three months to one year time frame. And we're going to get into exactly why that happens, all right, in a, in a second. Um, we know that extruded discs don't get better quite as uh, prevalently, so the percentage is lower, somewhere around 50%. And an extrusion is where the um, head of the herniation is bigger than the base. We have protrusion, um, which is where the base is bigger than the head. And again, the percentage of that changing is slightly different, slightly lower. And then finally, we have disc bulges, which is just where the shape of the of the disc changes and, and kind of comes out a little bit. And only about 12% of those seem to change significantly within that time frame. So is that positive news? Well, when we understand why, I think we start to understand why. So if we look at sequestered discs, we know that this material comes out and this produces an immune system response from the body. Very, very complicated. You need a PhD in all sorts of things um, to kind of understand that the real nuance and detail of the inflammatory system and what's going on there certainly beyond the scope of, of this video. But we have to understand that the immune system is a wonderful thing. It responds to these inflammatory chemicals. My example of that is like Pac-Man. We have things like microphages, which are wonderful parts of our immune systems, and they help produce other things like cytokines. And what these things do is come along and eat away at the detritus. So this stuff that's come out, the immune system responds to that, an inflammatory response, um, a cascade, and we often see inflammation as something negative. Actually, inflammation is often positive, and actually why some interventions that may reduce inflammation may not be a good thing when we start to understand how some of these responses work. But anyway, these wonderful parts of our immune system, these chemicals come along, um, start to eat away at this disc material. We get some kind of changes or, or semi-healing within the disc and things kind of return 
not to the way that they were, but definitely regress back to a better state. And we call that resorption. So this eating away at the disc material is resorbing it back into the system. And that's not a special exercise. It's not some medical magic. It's not some manual therapy. It's actually the response of the immune system itself. Now, the extruded disc, where we actually get the um, kind of migration of material, but not outside of the disc, maybe that produces a smaller immune system response. If we look at the protrusion, we see maybe a smaller immune system response, hence why they don't seem to change as much. And then finally, that disc bulge, well, maybe it doesn't cause as many problems as we think. We know that lots of people out there from other research have, you know, multiple disc bulges and don't have any pain. They are asymptomatic. So maybe the smaller the change within that disc, whether that's a bulge or a kind of a protrusion, maybe it doesn't produce the same response from the immune system because the body doesn't perceive it that much as a problem. And we know that changes within the disc and the disc shape do not necessarily mean that there is going to be pain. Certainly when we have these more serious type of herniation, such as a sequestration, you know, I think that often is better and more reliably related to pain. And then I also think it creates more of an immune system change from the body. Something else fascinating to understand is actually the size of, or, or how far the disc goes into the nerve root doesn't always predict how painful that problem's gonna be. So when we get a things like an MRI scan and we see a picture of the problem, it doesn't always tell us as much about the problem as we would like. So it doesn't tell us about what's going on chemically. It doesn't always tell us about what, ha we can't predict the kind of pain simply from the MRI. And again, there are a bunch of people with MRIs that probably don't look normal or have potential problems there but don't actually have a painful response to that. But back to the subject that we were talking about, discs do change, they resolve, they regress. We could call that healing potentially, although not healing in the sense that it's gonna go back to normal. We also know that if you have had a herniation, it probably does um, increase your risk of having another herniation, although you know that's certainly not something set in stone. But the biggest thing that heals or changes, um, and I use that term healing very, very loosely, by the way, certainly he, uh, regression or absorption or change is probably a better terminology. But we know that that happens and we know that it happens for a large percentage of discs within quite a short time frame of three months to one year. So is the news positive? Absolutely. What does the heavy lifting? Well, that's the immune system itself, not some kind of magic medical intervention. And the thing that probably supports the immune system the most is our health of us personally. So we know that things like higher BMI, smoking, etc., actually increase the risk of herniations and probably decrease the body's ability to help itself. Um, so is the news positive? Yes. Is your immune system amazing and wonderful? Yes. Do you have to support your immune system to function amazingly? I think so as well. But ultimately, it's good news and these things change.